Hey, it's me, Rusty the Sports Clown. This is my own show called Rusty the Sports Clown Show. I know people say, gosh, that is so original. Safety tip. This is huge and important. It's hot out there, so stay inside as much as you can. If you're going to go outside, stay hydrated. Jump in the pool, play in the sprinklers, throw water balloons. You know, just stay cool, all right? Okay, first thing coming up. Here we go. We are going to talk about the time. What is the time? The time says, <gasps> time for sports break. Yay, sports break. Okay, check it out. National Hockey League. Hockey's done. I know. Pittsburgh Penguins. They won it all. They won the Stanley Cup. That's that big trophy thing. It's not a you know coffee cup. It's huge. Uh huh. Congratulations, Penguins. NBA. They're done too for you know a week or two, and then they start up again. Basketball is finished. Okay. Finals. Guess what happened? Remember what I told you three months ago? Uh huh. The Warriors. They're going to dominate the Cavaliers. Just like I said, and that's what happened. So, you know, it wasn't even worth watching because I told you what was going to happen. NFL news, training camps, they're starting up. And I'm getting all excited about it because, you know, we're just like six or seven weeks now away from preseason starting. God, that's exciting. Cool. I'm ready for football. I'm ready for football. Indoor football. Gladiators. Yeah. First game of the playoffs, they got beat. They're done. Here's what happened. In the first quarter, quarterback Donovan Portery, League leading quarterback with, you know, touchdowns, passing yardage, all that stuff, dislocates his thumb. He was pretty much ineffective the rest of the game. That's why they lost. Sadness. Major League Baseball. Okay, you're not going to believe this. Okay, pay attention now. Four Lobo players were drafted, taken. Okay, here's what happened. We had Luis Gonzalez. He was drafted in the third round. Then we have Jack Zellner. He was drafted in the fourth round. Then we have two more, Tyler Stevens and Carl Stagihar. They were drafted in the 18th round. Okay, how many of you guys remember that kid I kept telling you about all year long out of Carlsbad, okay? Amazing pitcher, name's Trevor Rogers. Guess what happened to him? He was picked, not in the 13th round, but with the 13th overall pick. We're talking first round, pick number one, number two, number three. He was number 13. He was picked by the Miami Marlins. Now that means, you know, he's gonna be doing pretty well for a while. Good job, I hope you make it to the majors very, very soon. How many of you remember the under 20 World's Cup? That's where Venezuela beat the U.S. and it was all sadness and stuff. Well, yeah, Venezuela got theirs because England thumped them in the finals. Yeah, good job, England. Teach Venezuela to beat us. Yeah. Okay, moving on. U.S. soccer. This is the real World Cup. We're not talking under 20. We're talking big guys, you know, like my size and stuff and older or younger. But they're over 20. That's all I know. All right, here's what happened. U.S. lost its first two games. It was pretty embarrassing. Very sad. So... That led to a coaching change. Well, the new coach, they got the team all fired up. They promptly went out and they won a game. Then they played Mexico. Okay, now they played in Mexico. Nobody beats Mexico in Mexico. Nobody even scores against Mexico in Mexico. <laughs> Guess what we did? We tied them one to one. Nobody does that, but we did. I know. So we are now currently in third place in our bracket for the World Cup. Only the top three teams go, so keep it up, US. You've got a couple more games to go. Keep winning. Locally, how many of you guys go to the Albuquerque Soul FC games? Okay, they play at UNM Soccer Stadium. You got to go. So when I say just go, that's one of the things to just go to. All right, they just did this. Okay, they recorded their second shutout in two straight games. Awesome. Okay, keep it up, guys. Remember me saying, you know, it's hot. Well, in the Soul game, guess what happened? The scoreboard, it got so hot, it overheated and it quit. Yeah, because it was hot. It should have stayed indoors, or maybe it should have jumped in the pool. I don't know, something. All right, Lobo news. How many of you keep up with Lobo stuff? All right, we have sadness, kind of. We have Jordan Hunter. He became the fifth Lobo basketball player to leave the program. The very next day, guess what happened then? We had another guy, uh-huh, Darren Johnson. He became Darren, uh, Darren Jefferson. Damien, wow, I'm having trouble reading. Who wrote this? Must have been me. Damien Jefferson, he became the sixth player to leave the Lobo program. Okay, according to the coach, Coach Ware, he said it was a mutual decision between coach and player to mutually leave. Okay, I think, you know, maybe it wouldn't have been a good fit. Maybe the guys weren't fast enough for how he wanted to play. I don't know, but he's got new players coming in. I think it's gonna be good. All right, here's some great Lobo news. Sophomore Josh Kerr, how many of you remember him? A Couple months ago, he won the indoor mile. Took first place in the NCAA indoors. I know, awesome. All right, guess what he just did now? in the NCAA outdoor track and field stuff, he won the 1500. The dude is awesome. All right, heard him on the radio. Guess what he's gonna do now? 
All right, he's moving on. Next up is the World Competition. It's going to be in London in August. Good luck, Josh. I hope you take that one, too. All right, last Friday, the Isotopes, for one night only, became the Albuquerque Green Chili Cheeseburgers. Yes, they did. They wore green uniforms and everything. Had a green hat that had a cheeseburger on it. It was very cool. And they played the Fresno Grizzlies, who, for one night only, became the Fresno Tacos. It was awesome. I know, it was fun. Everybody that went said they had a great time, except for the final score. The Tacos beat the Green Chili Cheeseburgers 13 to 12. But, I mean, gosh, that was a pretty exciting game, except for the score. All right, how many of you follow Holly Holm? Yeah, she's our local local kickboxer who turned, you know, MMA girl who went to boxing and then kicking and yeah, all that stuff. Anyway, she just lost three straight matches until now. Okay, she beat up Beth Correa. Okay, third round, whack, it was a kick. And, you know, hit her in the face and stuff. And it kind of woozied her. That's a big word for a clown. Okay, then she followed it up, whack, with a punch. And the referee said, nope, that's it. You're done, Beth, you're done. Okay. Before that third round, though, it was still pretty much, you know, kind of boring. But unfortunately, that's Holly's style. You know, she'd stay back and, you know, don't get too much. Don't let them tackle you and stuff. But she came out in the third round and just dominated. It was awesome. All right, moving on to weird and different stuff. All right, University of Central Florida kicker. Okay, this is kind of different. Okay, Donald Delahaye. All right, this is different because he may have to quit either football or YouTube. Now you're going to say, well, why would he have to quit one or the other? Here's why. He's got a very popular YouTube channel. You know, he's got like, I don't know, 50,000 subscribers. He's had over 2 million views. <sighs> but here's the deal. Okay, he's getting advertising money because he has all of that, which I think is kind of cool. His videos, they're about, oh, I don't know, it's being um, a student athlete. The problem is, as a student athlete, you cannot collect money because they're saying, you know, no, 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 you can't collect on your likeness. So now he's got to make a decision. What do I do? And, you know, sadness because the money that he's making, he's been sending to his family in Costa Rica to help them out. Tough story. I don't know what to do. You know, help him out. Give him some ideas. All right, moving on. This is a great story. Okay, in the America's Cup competition, the skipper of the Swedish ship fell overboard. I'm pretty sure it's because he was too hot. You know, just, gosh, it's hot out here. I'm going to take a dip. So that's what he did. And because of that, they lost. New Zealand won. So now New Zealand is moving on to play U.S. Okay, Colorado Springs. How many of you have ever been there? Well, they have this thing called the Garden of the Gods 10-mile run. Well, in the middle of this run, they had a bear. Okay, this bear, he comes waddling up to the course, and he just stops there, and he's waiting for a gap, just watching the runners go by. And then when there's a big enough gap, I mean, he just walked right across. Wasn't that very polite of that bear? Some of the runners were kind of freaked out, though. All right, next up, we've got this cool thing coming, so you got to stick around. We have Deanna Butterscotch. She is going to be talking about Club Waka. You're asking me what that is? I have no idea, but we're going to find out. So stay tuned. Come back in a minute. Bye, guys. Their beautiful pass ahead, but Palace comes out. At this opportunity, he's taking all of them. For both Palace out. Hundred, but he was at Star Brothers before the contest. A deflection. <laughs> yep. It's Goss and Pavlin. Wants to make that run. Oh, there's the goal. Good look here. Luke, yeah, Florence slots it in. Celine took it away nicely. Oh, what a nutmeg there. Here comes Lawrence on a run. He's got a lot of options. He's going to take the shot. Oh. Clancy, well, maybe not. We might get another round. Oh, yes. Tommy Ramos. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Thanks for it, guys. This is awesome. All right, coming up, we have this really cool person, Deanna Butterscott. She's taking the place of Carlton Buttons because he's on vacation. We put him on a bus to go find out stuff, and we haven't seen him since. So anyway, here you go, Deanna. Off to you. Thanks, Rusty. 
For those who don't know, we here at Rusty the Sports Clown like to bring to light the achievements, accomplishments, and accolades of all our New Mexico athletes and icons. This week, we are here at Bullhead Park in Southeast Albuquerque for what some would remember as one of the best pastimes in their youth, kickball. That's right. For some time now, Albuquerque has had a thriving kickball community that takes this back-in-the-day pastime and turns it into something that is quite the kick. So, what fantastic things take place in an adult co-ed kickball league? I don't know just yet, Rusty. Let's go check it out. WACA, or the World Adult Kickball Association, was started almost 20 years ago by three bar-going professionals, Johnny Lahane, David Lowry, and um, I think their friend Jimmy, who all wanted to recreate the fun and exciting social camaraderie they experienced back in their college days. And after some booze and brainstorming, they figured the best way to do that was to get a bunch of their friends together and play some good old American kickball. Now, all these years later, their efforts and the growing passions of our nation's young adults have made Waka a presence in about 50 different cities all across the country. And they host more than just ball kicking activities, such as Waka Volleyball and Waka Dodgeball, to name some. This gathering of kickballers is more than just a bunch of local 20-somethings who are looking for something to do during the middle of their work week. Actually, everyone participating today happens to be part of a national craze that has been organized and supported by an association that may or may not have been named by Fozzie the Bear. I am here with Liz, Keith, Dave Busso, Chris Luna, Matt Benjamin. And what is your team's name? Ball and Oats. Bump to Kick. Hot Dogs and Tacos. After School Special. It's so that it abbreviates, well, you, you can figure that out. Uh, Randall Stevens. Okay, can you explain that for me? Uh, no. So I'm going to ask you some of the most hard-hitting questions. Are you ready for this really difficult interview? I am so ready. Okay, that's awesome. So, why do you walk a uh, well, I moved here from the Midwest, so I had like no friends, and these are like, you know, 26 instant friends. Why do I Waka? Waka is fun. Why wouldn't you want to Waka? I always thought it stands for walk at kickball all the time, um, and so my team was getting mad at me for not running. The social aspect, it gets me out of the house, gets me to meet new and people that I would never have met in any other life. That does seem like it would put your team at a slight disadvantage. Yeah. Do you think I would have a chance maybe if I joined, if I could get some friends? I think we could find a team for you. Yeah. Why do I waka? Correct. Why don't you waka? That's why I'm asking you. No, why don't you waka? Because I'm on a diet. This is great for diets. We drink beer and we play sports slowly. It's actually very good for diets. There's nobody here that's overweight actually. Right, no, I totally believe that. Do you think that kickball should be an Olympic sport? Absolutely. There are some people who are very good at kickball and about nothing else, like uh, myself. No. Takes, takes zero athletic ability to do this. I drink the whole time. Yes, it should. I think it would be one of those things that people would enjoy and have a good time doing. And you would get a lot of people backing you up. Okay, do you think you would make the Olympic team? No, honestly, I don't think so. If it was an Olympic sport, there would be a lot of beer. There would be a lot of fun, yeah. uh, but there would be a lot of competition too, so maybe it should be. No, I don't think it should be an Olympic sport, um, but if it were to be an Olympic sport, Albuquerque would win. Of course, because Albuquerque is just number one. Do you know of any Olympians that may be wandering around here? We've got a few of them around here. <laughs> Some that maybe take it too serious? Um, not necessarily too serious, but just great players. Can you, is there any special gear that you know of that's needed for this sport? Uh, soccer cleats are an absolute must. Uh, People got injuries. Surprisingly, you get kickball injuries if you don't wear soccer cleats. Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't know anybody who wears special gear except for injuries that they want to use a brace to protect their bodies. So the only thing you really need is good attitude and cleats. So, you know, no one wears like a pinky brace just in case they fall over, any kind of ear guards? <laughs> no. You should always wear your shin guards. Um, people sliding into the bases, it's scary. So wear your shin guards all the time. For something like that, would you say like full-fledged like motorcycle gear would be appropriate? Oh God, no. Any special gear? Uh, steroids. So last question I have. Uh, would you be uh, against anyone using any kind of performance enhancing athletic wear? Because our host is a clown. His name is Rusty the Sports Clown. He's on cable. I know it's a beautiful thing. But he has a little bit of uh, special equipment that he has to wear because of his, you know, his handicap of being a clown. And so I'm wondering if uh, you feel as though someone walked onto the field with this, if it would be fair. Would it be fair? Um, probably not for them, but the other team would appreciate it. I think if you brought him out here, most of us would run away because we'd be scared of him. 
I would, I would go for it if I were him, for sure. Not at all. I, nobody could run in that. Not too much of an advantage. It's almost about the same size as mine, so. <laughs> you don't think so? No, okay. not, not one bit. We got footage of the clown running. Not fast. It's harder to run with big feet, but he has a better option on the kick. Did you know he's very famous? No. He's very famous. That's normally the first indicator of how famous somebody is, is how well other people know. And it's just, no. It's very, it's very tipped. Uh -huh. So like, it's going to make the ball go straight back at him every time. It's not going to work right. Well, there you go. Physics lessons on Rusty the Sports Clown. Well, I also try to avoid clowns at all costs. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning that that's the case everywhere. Thank you very much for being part of this. I wish you the best of luck today. I hope your team does very well. Thank you. Thank you very much for being part of this interview. Good luck tonight and have a great time, okay? Thank you very much for, uh, for being part of this interview and good luck today. I pre appreciate it and good luck today, okay? Thank you. Bye. You know what? Let's go ahead and talk to some of the people in charge here because that was a little strange. Now I am talking to Kristen, okay. Rebecca. Okay, and what do you guys do here? So we actually run um, Club Waka Kickball here in Albuquerque, and we are community coordinators. So we actually uh, organize the kickball sports here in Albuquerque. Okay, that's exciting. How long have you guys been doing that for? I've been doing it for about three years. And I've been doing it for a year and a half. Any tidbits or advice for anyone who's thinking about joining the sport? I think most of our teams warm up by drinking some beer. Um, first, and then maybe like just a like, light stretch. Yeah. If you think you're going to be a big kicker, there's going to be a lot of like <laughs> kick stretching and right, into it. right, of course. Which depends that, on how competitive you are, I would say. Can you tell me a little bit about this Waka Palooza thing? Because in our research, we found a lot of references to that. What exactly is Waka Palooza? Waka Palooza is a kickball tournament that is in Las Vegas, Nevada, every year in October and uh, about 4,000 players from all over the country get together and play either competitive kickball or fun kickball or dodgeball, volleyball. There's all kinds of different things to do, lots of parties. It's really just a big fun time. It's a huge social gathering of like-minded, crazy, fun people who go from the competitive to the fun spectrum. You can do some flip cup, you can have some fun with the semi-competitive league, and for those really excited, there's some cash prizes. So. That's pretty cool. So is there anything else you could tell me about the organization that we haven't uh, touched on yet? I think really it's just about meeting new people and kind of mingling and getting yourself to stay active as you get a little older and have, have a little bit of fun with it at the same time. Trying to avoid the injuries while having <laughs> fun as adults. Well, you know what? Thank you guys very much for letting us know more about Club Waka and everything it has to offer. You guys, thank you very much. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. The founders of Waka are bringing their vision for adult fun and interaction to life. So everybody needs to get out here and have a blast with some of the most fun people in Albuquerque. We're all out here to have a good time. So come on out and have a good time with us. Anyway, Rusty, I brought some spare change of clothes. So uh, I'm going to try to get in some sweet, sweet kickball in action. Maybe they'll let me pitch hit or something? I have to go. So I'll see you back in studio in just a bit. Hey everybody, wasn't that amazing? The things that you learn about kickball. I didn't know half that stuff. Well, guess what? Let's welcome Miss Deanna Butterscotch onto the set. Come on in, Deanna. Hey Rusty, how are you today? Wow, you're so much nicer than that Carlton Button guys. Why don't you have a seat? Oh, thank you, Rusty. You're very thank welcome. You. You're so sweet. Carlton. Yeah, I'll I'll sit over I'll I'll sit over here. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. You wow. Know, you know, you are, girl, huh? you are nothing like what Carlton sells you as. Not at all. Not at <laughs> all. I'm very, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. And it was so much fun going out there and getting that story of all the Wacaneers that just go and kick balls all day long. The whole thing is just about uh, anyone who wants to socialize, have a good time, and have fun. And I think that's kind of primarily what it's all about. And Because when we were down there, we had so much fun. And everyone was just was there to have a great time. So it, it, that's pretty much it. That's that's what it was put together. You know, Rusty, you talked about doing the mud volleyball thing next year. What if we did a kickball thing? Because I think you would have quite the advantage with uh, your 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 large feet. So. I might. I might. <laughs> I guarantee I would not strike out. All right. Awesome. I guarantee that. Well, it was it was a lot of fun, Rusty. Thank you for sending me on such a cool assignment. Well, I'm glad you had a great time. And isn't she so much cuter and so much nicer than that Carlton Buttons guy? I know. Yeah, he's not going to like that at all. <laughs> but we don't care. So, all right, time for us to go.
Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Okay, this is our prognostication segment, and you're not going to believe who I've got with me. Okay, I have Mr. Anthony Engelhart, and we are here live at Jerry World, uh -huh, home of the Dallas Cowboys. Now you're going to ask, why are we here? Here's why we're here. They just had the national championships for the junior national prognostication people. So... Mr. Anthony Engelhardt here. He finished third nationally after finishing second in his class here. So, Anthony, tell us a little bit about yourself. I placed second in my class. Very good. I know, and third nationally. Well, how come if you finished second, you got to go to nationals? Was it because the guy that finished first couldn't go? Yeah, uh, I don't know. He just kind of broke his leg. Wow. Yeah, that messes up with prognosticating right there. Brandon. Yeah. Maybe it was one of those mob things. The guy was too good, so they put a hit on him and broke his leg, so he couldn't go. Is that what happened? I don't know. I never know. Mm, yeah. Don't ask, don't tell. I like that. Okay. Good question. That's what we'll talk about next week. All right. First up in our prognosticating, we have soccer. We're going to start with the Albuquerque Soul Football Club versus the Tucson Football Club. That's all soccer stuff. That's big soccer talk. That is soccer talk. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win that one? What do you think? I got Tucson winning. Do you really? Because I did my research, and they're winning. Wow. Guess what? He's wrong. Okay, Albuquerque's going to win, and here's why. Their goalie has shut out, completely blanked the other team for two straight games. I think he can do it for three. That's what I think. That's why I think you're wrong. All right, we're going to move right along. We have, who do we have now? We're going to talk baseball. You ready to talk baseball? Ready to talk baseball. Okay, do you know anything about baseball? I know baseball. Did you ever play baseball? I never played baseball. But you know baseball. I know baseball. Okay. I All play right. baseball. I don't know baseball. We're going to talk about it. We have the Albuquerque Isotopes. Okay. An isotope, you know what that is? That's that thing, part of an atomic bomb that goes boom. Okay. Explosions. Yes. yes. They are playing the El Paso Chihuahuas. Now, a Chihuahua is a little tiny dog. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win this one? Well, big bombs sound more stronger than tiny dogs, so I got isotopes. Okay. Very cool. All right. Here's why I think. Isotopes, you know, they're still in the running for first place in the southern division of the PCL. El Paso, yeah, we always beat them. So, I kind of agree with him. Isotopes are going to beat the Chihuahuas. That's what I think. All right, now we're going to talk the big boys. Okay, this is the parent club for the Albuquerque Isotopes. That would be the Colorado Rockies. Okay. They are playing the L.A. Dodgers. Now, the L.A. Dodgers, a lot of people locally, they, you know, root for the Dodgers because the farm team used to be the Albuquerque Dodgers, then it was the Albuquerque Dukes, then it was the Albuquerque Isotopes, all farm teams for the Dodgers. And then the Dodgers got all up and he no, 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 we want to go somewhere else. So we don't like that. Stupid name. Dodgers. I know. What do you think? I have the Dodgers winning, actually. Stupid Dodgers. Do you have the Dodgers winning? I have the Dodgers oh, winning. I throw a penalty flag on that. He is wrong. No, I you're stupid. wrong. No. Wow. Did you hear that? He said, I'm wrong. Here's why he's wrong. The Rockies currently in first place. Dodgers currently in second place. It's going to stay that way. We'll all see. Right. So there. All right, now then we're going to move on to something really cool. How many of you remember me talking about this cool thing called the America's Cup? Okay, now it's not a tiny little one like this. No, it's this big monstrous thing. It's for sailing. They do it like on the water and stuff. And remember that team from Sweden who their captain fell overboard and they got beat by New Zealand? Well, New Zealand wound up winning the best of nine series between those two teams. Now they're currently playing USA Team Oracle for this monstrous America's Cup. Let's hear your prognosis. I have one, smarty pants. New Zealand winning because they have the higher advantage. And why do they have the higher advantage? Because they're faster. And I went to Prague, whatever, how you say it, school. Did you? Wow. I didn't go to prognostication school, but Mr. Smarty Pants over there did la tita. Uh -uh. So, okay, you said you finished third? I Were did. Were only two people competing? There was four, actually, so. Wow, he yeah. showed me. Okay. All right. He's picking New Zealand. They are fast. I will give them that. And they do maybe have an advantage because they've got this awesome computer system that tells them, you know, how much adjustment to make on each sale so that it's perfect right away, as opposed to USA Team Oracle who says, go a little more. Yeah, that way, no, no, okay, all right, we're there. Whereas New Zealand was already there like 10 seconds ago. 
But here's why U.S. is going to win. It's our home court. It's our water. We can win on our water. That's what I think. Go USA! See? USA. Team Oracle! Yeah. I'm going to get a jersey that says Team Oracle. And he's going to say, huh, what's that for? And it's for beating New Zealand. That's what it's going to be for. Loser. Loser. If you think so. If yeah. you think so, Rusty. So, yeah, Mr. Loser Boy, what grade are you going to be in? Ninth grade. Ninth grade. And where are you going to go to school? A Trisco Heritage. A Trisco Heritage? I thought you were going to go to, like, the USA NASA Prognosticating Championship Academy. I'm way too good for them. Wow. I know. Way too good. I can see that. He's got attitude. Uh -huh. Just a little bit. Do you need a bigger chair? Not yet. Okay. All right. We'll keep in the little boy chair then for a little while. All right. We're going to move on. We are going to talk Australian rules football. Do you know anything about that? No. no, I didn't think so. So here's where I got the, you know, awesomeness in this one. I know who's going to win this. We have Adelaide Crows, my favorite team, playing Hawthorne, and I have no idea what their mascot is. So, Mr. Knowledgeable, who knows nothing about this, who do you think is going to win this? I have Hawthorne. And why do you have Hawthorne? Because I think they're cooler than the Crows. Wrong again! That's a penalty. Even you though you are wrong, I'm still your biggest fan. I like this guy. He's not bad, okay? You're not as bad as I thought you were. You're awesome. Okay, I'm going to pick Adelaide, and everybody knows why. You have to pick Adelaide because who plays on the team? Hugh Greenwood. That's my man. He played for the Lobos. Tall, red-headed dude. Yeah, uh -huh. guess what color his sister's hair is? Red. Uh -huh. And what do we think about red-headed girls, Mr. Sound Guy? Yeah, he's nodding his head. He likes red-headed girls, too. All right. Adelaide is going to win because they have Mr. Hugh Greenwood and because they are the Crows and because I have no idea what Hawthorne's mascot is. So, Crows beat a no-name mascot any day of the week. So there. Uh. Up to you, I guess. All right. Last one. We have the Calgary Stampeders versus the Ottawa Red Blacks. This is Canadian football. Okay, played up in Canada. Not in Australia, not in the U.S. They play in Canada in uniforms and stuff. Mm. Who do you think is going to win this? I have the Red Blacks winning. And why do you have the Red Blacks winning? They sound cooler. They sound cooler. Yeah. Well, let me explain this. They're called the Red Blacks because their uniforms are red and black. Kind of like your uniform there. Huh? It's all red. Whoa. All right. So they are the Red Blacks. Good choice on your part. But I'm going to pick the Calgary Stampeders, and here's why. Okay, the Stampeders, you know, once they get going, that's like a big, massive herd, and they just run over everything. They don't care what color we are, red, black, purple, orange. They don't care. So the Stampeders are going to win this one. That's what I think, anyway. All right, now then, <clears throat> stay tuned, because coming up next is the Steve Davis Show. He's like our boss and everything. So, prognosticate with us. Go to our Facebook page, forward slash, Rusty the Sports Clown. Can't miss us, we're right there. Okay, agree with us, disagree with us, we don't care. Just leave comments. So, I welcome you to follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. Hey, follow me to Lobo's Inc., because, you know, I'm very famous, and he's got a Lobo's uniform on, so cool, right there. If there's an event... A game, a meet, a match, or, you know, a prognosticating thing. Just go! All right. I am hoping to prognosticate in college for the Lobos. Do they offer scholarships in that? Yes, they do. Wow. I, I know. I should have done that. I could have done that. I could have been a college graduate. I could have, uh -huh. instead of being a clown. Well, anyway, that's it for today. See you next time. Gotta go. Bye. I love you.